But I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce our, our next uh, keynote speaker. Uh, Kirsten Danielsen is the director of the Arts Council of Norway. She was originally trained as a dancer at the Norwegian Ballet Academy and the Ballet Arts Broadway Dance Center in New York. And she's worked in a number of different roles in arts management, and she has now become a very good friend. My dear friend, Kirsten Danielsen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Balls over to you. And now Balls it's up to court. me. With such a cool cat of an ambassador, I don't see any reason that we should be very formal. So I'll skip my dear excellencies, because you're all excellencies to me. You're here because you're art lovers, and because you care about the Arctic region. Eight months ago, I was challenged uh, by a woman who can best be called a force of nature. Her name is Maria Utsi. You all know her by now. And she is the mastermind behind this entire meeting. And she came to me at the office in Oslo and she said, Kristin, um, how come every time we talk about the northern region and every time we talk about the Arctic, we talk about resources as in oil, fish and gas? How on earth have we managed to miss out on the human factor? How can we never talk about the people as a resource? I want, to, I want there to be created a specific cultural policy on the Arctic, and I'm gathering people from eight nations to join me in Hashta in June next year. Do you want to join in? And I thought about that for about 10 seconds, and I said, yes. I here need to quote the good old-fashioned Jerry Maguire movie. Do you remember that one? She had me at hello. <laughs> you remember that one? Very good. Maria Utsi had me at hello, because she's right. We do talk mostly about natural resources, and we skip the human factor, and we need to do something about that. So how can we make that happen? And how can I, as a director of an arts council, contribute? Well. If eight nations come together to create politics, someone needs to put these politics into action to make it happen. And this is where the Arts Councils enter. And this is where I need my little thing, because I have some images to show you. And um, that's going to happen very soon. There's Arts Councils and agencies alike throughout the world in all shapes and sizes. Uh, the Arts Council of Norway supports culture and projects throughout the entire country. Our remit is to guarantee an independent arts and culture scene in Norway that is vibrant and diverse. In order to fill our remit, we have tools such as funding schemes, development programs, communication services, all sorts of tools to make sure that our users know about us and how to use us. But our single most powerful tool is to listen. At the heart of everything we do are the artists and the arts organizations. We receive approximately 20,000 applications per annum, and they're all aiming for funding. But these applications are all small pieces of a larger mosaic called the Norwegian art sector. We like to see these pieces as unique data that we can put together to analyze the bigger picture on what is really going on in the scene right now. We like to see ourselves as a resource center, providing knowledge about trends and developments to artists, arts organizations, politicians, so that they again may further develop their artistic work, their politics, or local grant schemes. But we also use it ourselves, thank you very much. We also use it ourselves, there we are, to check if we are delivering on our task, if we are in control of the situation, to fill in our blank spots, because we're constantly on the lookout for new initiatives, new ideas, and new potential. And this is why Maria had me at hello, because Maria pointed out some really interesting new potential. Let me quickly add, the Nordic region is not new to the Arts Council of Norway. We have been funding projects in the North for a long time. And I have to say that Nordic cooperation is not new either. I think if there was a world championship in organizing, I think we would certainly win it. What is new is an Arctic initiative focusing on the four million people that share this common ground that we call a region. 
and the fact that we're eight nations sharing the responsibility of putting their stories, their tradition, and their cultural expressions on the international agenda. La Chartier just said, the narrative of the North has been created by people outside the region with strong interests in the region. And that's basically because of the rich natural resources such as oil, fish, and gas. And these interests are not always in sync with the people who inhabit the region. Arts projects may be the way of highlighting the interest of the people in the region. I will get back with some short uh, uh, stories afterwards. So we see the initiative from Maria both as interesting and necessary in order not to discover, but to develop and deepen our knowledge about this part of the country and our part of the world. We are ready to recomplexifying the North, and as uh, Chartier just said. We invited, you know, after these 10 seconds of thinking in the canteen of the Arts Council in Oslo, when I said, yes, I'd like to contribute, um, Maria said uh, in her speech today that it has been a long journey, but my goodness, it has been a short journey, because eight months is not a long time, but we have managed to establish an alliance with our colleagues in the other eight Arctic countries. And we are very much looking forward to have a separate meeting with you all for continued conversation tomorrow. But what is Arctic culture? Is it possible to define an Arctic culture? The Arctic region is very diverse in many senses, from scarcely populated areas to cosmopolitan cities. And the diversity of the region is enormous. So there is no one answer to this question. There are many answers. But for further discussion, we would like to propose this outset. Arctic culture is culture that takes place in the region. It's culture which shows perspectives or experiences from the North. It's culture that crosses borders between the nations of the North. And it's cultural expressions from indigenous people in the region. But enough theory, let me show you some actual examples that I think are good examples of stories from the North. The first project I'd like to share with you is SALT. SALT Festival was a great success when it opened in 2015 on a remote beach in Gildeskål, far away from urban city centers. It is a project that focuses on how people have lived and survived in the Arctic region for centuries following animals, fish, and the cycle of the year. What you see is a structure which is called the yell, which is inspired by the wooden structure to dry fish in use in northern Norway. So you may never have seen the yell before, but you may well have tasted the produce in Bacalao. It is made by the Finnish architect Sami Rintala, working in Norway. The project combined visual arts, music, film, seminars and workshops on Sami nomadic building traditions with an overall objective to enhance the knowledge about the arts, about cultural heritage, and the vast environmental challenges on the Arctic region. The team behind SALT is the company Langferd, and it's actually on tour in Norway now. This culture house is on the quay of Oslo, just opposite the National Opera House. So there you have two interesting culture houses right next to each other. My next example is coming up very soon. Oh, here we are. It is the Ridu Ridu Festivala. It's an annual festival taking place in Kofjur in Troms. It was established in 1991 with a group of young people taking pride in their Sami background. Ridu Ridu, I hope I pronounced that correctly, means small storm at the coast, and it focuses on indigenous music and arts and has really had an impact in raising the awareness and knowledge about the arts of indigenous groups across the world and across the Arctic. Karoline Sofia Tveitnes Trollvik, I met you. You are in here somewhere. Your festival is a great example that really has raised the awareness from people all over the world, young and old. And this image shows Buffy St. Marie with her band holding the Sami flag. 
Ridu Rivu is responsible for the workshop also tomorrow on contemporary indigenous art where you can learn more. Another example is, I'm pointing this there. This is interesting, it's a lot of fun, it makes you keep you awake. I'll start throwing the ball at you if you fall asleep. Dark Ecology is a project that explores the border zones of Russia and Norway through arts and research. The project looks into the concepts of nature and ecology and the debates around industrial pollution and the exploitation of natural resources. In one of the projects, knowledge from the real deep underground, the Kola Superdeep Borehole, is used as a starting point for artistic interpretations. And this is the deepest borehole ever drilled. It's made by Russian scientists and it goes 12 kilometers into the earth. Dark Ecology commissions new artwork, artworks and employs a new generation of artists, local workers, and people from all over Europe. Hilde Methi from Kirkenes is a curator in the project, cooperating with many partners, and among them is the artist group Moloko from Murmansk, the interdisciplinary festival Sonic Act from Amsterdam, and EU-funded projects in arts and research. Hilde Metti will be presenting some of her projects in the workshop tomorrow. It's called EU and the Arctic, a place for culture. This, <laughs> yes, this next spectacular picture is from the annual festival Baden's Spectacle in Kirkenes, which is described as a cultural political cocktail. Pikene på broen, or the girls on the bridge, is a company of curators from Kirkenes who produce the festival every year and has for a long time contributed to the debate about the role of arts and culture in the border zone between Russia and Norway. The artist Morten Trovik was this year responsible for the grand piece The Trial of the Century. This is a mock trial version of the groundbreaking lawsuit where Norwegian environmental organizations Greenpeace and Nature and Youth are suing the Norwegian government for allegedly allowing un unconstitutional oil exploitation in the Barents Sea. What you see on this picture is a Nordic amphitheater fashioned from 190 tons of ice. It's the largest ice sculpture ever made in Norway, and it's made by architect Peder Ista. This served as a courtroom. And on February 11th this year, after three days of impassioned arguments from the prosecution and defense, the People's Tribunal of Kirkenes casted their verdict and decided on perhaps the most fateful choice of our time, between economy and ecology, prosperity and environment. The audience voted yes, Oil extraction in the Southeast Barren Sea is against the Norwegian Constitution, paragraph 112. The trial, the real trial, comes up later this year. So yes, Biden Spectacle gives us art that goes straight into the heart of the political debate. And this project is a good example of the conflict of interest that we may see between those who define the region from the outside and those who actually inhabit the region and sees it from the inside. The curator is peaking the Pobruun is hosting tomorrow's session, Redefining Arctic Culture, Russian Perspectives. I'm sure they will tell you more about the mock trial. Finally, I'd like to mention Bostede, which is a very important project. In 2012, the National Open Air Museum in Oslo and the Museum of Cultural History signed an agreement with Sami Parliament to bring back 2,000 items of Sami origin to six museums in Sápmi. This is important because it also reflects a discussion on who has the ownership to cultural heritage, to their own cultural heritage. The project will be going on for a long time, but an exhibition opened at Troante, which is the centenary of the first Sami assembly. This took place in, on February 6, uh, 1917, and it was the pre-runner to the National Sami Assembly. And you will meet the president, Vibeke Larsson, at Samatingi later on today. The Sami artists are also well-established internationally. 
At Documenta in Kassel and Athens this year, 14 Sami artists are presented. For instance, Marit Anasara's work, Pile o Satmi, which comments on the situation of reindeer herders in regards to the new state regulations on the amount of animals that can be held. Her work refers to the history of indigenous people of North America. Also, Marit Anasara and Office for Contemporary Arts will be present in the session about contemporary arts tomorrow. These are all examples of stories from the North offering a slightly different perspective than what we usually hear. What I'm looking forward to discussing further is this. What is the role of culture in societal development in the Arctic? And how can we support it better? How can we contribute so that we do not continue to miss out on the human factor and the people inhabiting this region? I believe we have a lot to learn from each other, and I would like to invite you into a conversation about arts and culture with a circumpolar perspective. Let's find out what are the shared experiences. Is there a greater picture across the Arctic? How can the Arts Council support the voices that are not heard, just like Arthur said in his introductions, how can we get the stories out? How can we together promote the role of culture in this area? And how can Arts Council in general contribute to the development in the Arctic? If our national politicians now set up with a common aim on developing Arctic cultural policy, how can we join forces and make sure that we follow up and put that policy into life. Finally, we are very different nations in this room. We are very different of size. We have a multitude of languages, huge variations in politi uh, political systems, traditions and history. But the fact that we are here, and the fact that we are now discussing our common grounds, our shared history, and the people living in this area tells me that we have more in common than what tells us apart. In a world with a certain eagerness to build walls between nations and to opt out of international partnerships, I see the initiative of the Arctic Arts Summit as a beacon of trust in international cultural collaborations. Art is actually the perfect tool for building bridges to make people come together and sometimes tearing walls down. Nations are indeed independent, but in cultural collaborations, we are actually the opposite. We are interdependent. I like that word, interdependent, because we simply need to work together to make this happen. And the fact that 100 arts organizations, 250 artists, cultural politicians from eight nations are here today and during these two days, it makes me very optimistic about what we can achieve together. And finally, Maria, wherever you are, you're probably lying out flat on the sofa, relaxing behind there. Thank you for your initiative. Please don't ever change. Thank you for your attention. Thank I forgot you. the ball. That's okay. I'll pick up the ball. I'll pick up the ball. Thank, thank you very much, Kirsten. I think that some of the questions that she asked were absolutely central. I mean, the fact that we have eight countries here, uh, plus I think we also have to recognize that it's not just the countries that are here, but nations and peoples, indigenous peoples uh, in particular, local governments, um, regional governments, municipalities, arts councils, all of these actors have a really important role to play. And again, uh, now I think you, you are going to have a chance to do some more of the networking that I think is in a, in a really essential part of this, uh, of, of this conference. Uh, I won't throw the ball out to you, but I'll do it metaphorically and say that it's, it's now a chance for you to take a bit of a break. Uh, lunch will be served in, uh, in, in the foyer. Uh, for people with allergies, there is a separate table that is identified for those who have uh, those, those allergies. And also, we will have the pleasure of uh, enjoying a performance by artist Alison Akuchuk Warden, who will perform Siku Siku. So we will see you back here in an hour. So that will put us back here about a, a quarter past one. So thank you very much for, the, for this morning session and look forward to the discussion later on this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.